Thanks uh, for your testimony today and for all the work that you do to keep us safe and to interdict drugs. Critically important to my state, uh, we're experiencing the opioid crisis um, about as bad as anywhere else in the United States. We have a death rate that's three times the national average right now. I was interested in Mr. Patton's comments about opioids and the increasing trafficking uh, by boat. I'm wondering if you could unpack that a little bit and let us know what you're observing and if that also um, you know, has to do with synthetic opioids coming from China. Yes, sir, great question, sir. Um, the, the trafficking that we're seeing with opioids, uh, uh, especially the synthetics, uh, fentanyl and so forth, it's less on the water. Um, while there's been an incident or two where fentanyl's been seized uh, as part of a maritime interdiction, it's really not coming to the United States that way. It's coming across our southern border uh, in both powder and pill form, and it's coming through our postal and express consignment uh, package facilities. Um, and there's uh, increased efforts to work in a multi-agency manner uh, to target those entry points, uh, particularly at the postal and parcel facilities, working with our express consignment carriers to help uh, better target those packages coming in. Uh, that is a, a going to be a, a change in focus and emphasis in the upcoming national interdiction plan as this threat has really evolved since the last time that the plan was, uh, was issued. As we focus on the transit zone in terms of interdiction efforts, are we missing smaller crafts that are bringing shipments of synthetic opioids directly from Mexico to the U.S.? Sir, if I could take that one. Um, we're, we're not seeing increased maritime shipments of synthetic opioids from the transit zone. It, as Mr. Patton said, that's just not the way it's shipped. It's usually coming in as a precursor into Mexico, synthesized, and then uh, transited or trafficked in other ways. But I, I think there's an important point here, sir. Um, cocaine has become the delivery vehicle of choice for synthetic opioids. Over 70% of cocaine overdose deaths involve uh, fentanyl. So cocaine laced with, laced with fentanyl, cocaine used with fentanyl, et cetera. So it, it's not easy to just divorce the two problems. I think that the two problems are inextricably linked. So even though we're not seeing uh, any, any kind of movement of opioids by sea, uh, we've got to remain in the cocaine fight. Over. I was recently with the captain and crew of the cutter Tahoma in uh, Portsmouth Harbor, New Hampshire, um, and they were uh, sharing some of their observations about the increasing technology of the cartels um, and how it's been difficult to keep pace. Um, could you comment a little bit about what we're seeing out there with respect to their advancing technology? You mentioned UAS and, and some other innovations that you hope to deploy, but how are we going to keep pace over time? Sir, so these multinational corporations that are TCOs are going to leverage every technology they can. GPS trackers on their vessels, the drugs, encrypted comms. The good news is what, what they rely on can become a vulnerability. So I mentioned Domex, which is document media exploitation. Uh, we're getting more and more into that business, which is uh, taking everything we can off the electronics, turning that back around, feeding that in with basically what we get from the interviews with the folks, the suspects that we've collected, uh, and then that drives uh, what our tactics are for the next takedown. So that we're, we're using technology to find them and we're using technology against them. Sir, sir if I could just offer that yes, sir. we face a very agile adversary with these drug trafficking organizations. Uh, they will make adjustments as we make adjustments. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing is a change in tactics moving from uh, go-fast to low-profile go-fast vessels and the increased use of semi-submersibles which are harder to detect, and it goes back to the chairman's point that we're only able to detect about, or tar detect about a small percentage of no movement, only target about 20% of movement. Well, thank you. I know this committee stands ready to work with you to try to get a step ahead and try to improve those numbers. So let us know how we can help. Thank you.